Hi, everyone. So I'm going to be teaching an upcoming course about how I use Google tools like Google Drive, Google Spreadsheets, Google Docs. And we'll also talk about Google Calendar, or we might even talk about Todoist, which is my to-do list software. And I wanted to just make a video kind of giving the background of why I'm teaching the course. And um, hopefully some of you who are interested in how I use this stuff to run my business uh, will join me for the course and, and learn something useful. Um, so first of all, uh, by the way, if you're interested, uh, there's a link in, in the notes of the video to see a little bit more about the course, but I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just tell you through the video here. So I am teaching this because um, many clients over the years have asked me how I use Google tools um, because they noticed that I run my whole business basically on Google spreadsheets, Google documents, and Google Drive. I have no files on my computer. <laughs> Let me repeat that. I have no files on my computer. Everything is in the cloud because it's actually more reliable. I trust Google more than I trust my computer. And if you've, if you've ever had a computer crash, you know what I'm talking about. Your computer can crash at any time. Uh, of course, thankfully it doesn't happen often. It's, it's a rare thing, but still, it's more likely for your computer to crash than for Google to lose your files because Google has multiple, multiple backups of your files and you might have at most one backup, you know, and it's, it's so much trouble. So I do, I put all my files in the cloud because one, it's more reliable. I've never had in 10 years of doing this, 10 years, I've been doing this since actually since 2005, I think it was. So more than 10 years. I have never lost a file from Google. I mean, I've, uh, any files I've uploaded, it has, it's still there. It's always there. It's always reliable. It's always gettable. Whereas my computer, in the last 15 years, I've had several computers and changing from one computer to the next, it's so much hassle. Whereas now, if you just, if you took my computer today, it's no problem. I can, my entire business is instantly runnable from a different computer because everything is in the cloud. I don't have to worry about any computer. And, and the fact that everything's in the cloud also means that all of my files are accessible from my phone. So I can run my business anywhere with any computer, as long as I have the internet access, as long as I have my password, I can run my business. It's all in the cloud. So I don't know why more people don't do that. I think it's mainly there are misconceptions about online privacy and security misconceptions about that, um, which I hope to clear up in the course and just not knowing how to do it. And so it's so much lighter for me just to run my business from any computer, any device, as long as I have my password. The second thing is I have never been hacked, never, not in 50, 20 years of using the internet. I have never been hacked. Why? I'm not a computer genius. I just know a few tricks. And some of you just don't know those tricks and that's why you get hacked. So let me share with you what some of those tricks are. Um, first, the most important thing is before you log into a website, you need to double check the URL. That's it. That's, that's my biggest trick. I have, I have two tips for you on that. Um, one is to check the URL before you log into a website. Let me explain what I mean. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, so when I, before I log into a website, what I check is I check a couple things. One is, you know, usually there's this, oh, by the way, I'm gonna hide that. Um, usually there's this lock icon there and you can click on the lock icon to see if the connection is secure. And then the second thing is you wanna note, notice, you wanna study and understand how URLs work. If you don't do this, you will get hacked, okay? So here's a very simple thing. URLs work like this. It always starts with HTTP. Hopefully there's an S. Ideally there's an S because then that means it's secure. That's what S means, secure. So look for HTTPS, okay? Ideally you see that, before, but some websites don't have S and that's, that's not ideal, but HTTPS is mu it's much more secure. Colon, slash, slash. So you need to understand this, okay? Bear with me before we go on. 
please, please understand how URLs work. HTTPS colon slash slash. If you don't see that, if you see other weird stuff at the beginning, like data, da, da, ba, ba, before you see HTTPS, okay? If it's something like this, uh, you need to be worried because someone is probably trying to get your password. So as long as the URL starts with HTTPS, then we're good. HTTPS colon slash slash. Now we're not totally good yet, okay? HTTP colon uh, slash slash. And then what comes after this before the dot com is extremely important, okay? You want, what you wanna check is, it doesn't really matter what the first word is, but what you wanna check is, what you wanna check is the, the dot com slash. That's the most important part of the URL. Sometimes it's dot org slash, dot net slash, but it's usually dot com slash, you know, google.com slash whatever, yahoo.com slash whatever, hotmail.com slash whatever, right? Okay. So check the first dot com slash after the HTTPS colon, well, I've already told you about that. You need to check for that, HTTPS colon slash slash. And then, and then the, very, the very first dot com slash is what you need to look at. And then here's the thing, you need to look at the very word before the dot com slash. So look at the dot and then the word and then dot com slash. So, so for example, this is dot yahoo, okay? This is yahoo.com. Okay, sometimes it doesn't have it. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's just HTTPS slash slash, you know, yahoo.com and then whatever at the end. It doesn't matter, whatever follows at the end doesn't matter, okay? As long as you look for, again, the first dot com slash, what is the word before that? The word before that is Yahoo. And then the word, the thing before Yahoo is a slash or is a dot, then you're safe, then you're safe. But let's, let me give you a test here. What if it says this, secure yahoo.com slash whatever. Is this Yahoo? No, it's not because it's some website called secure yahoo.com. You see what I mean? So, but if it's secure dot Yahoo, dot com slash then you're then you're good anyway i don't want to go on here because this is this is a free video and for free videos one of the things i always tell you is make it easy to consume i've already made it, i've already made this too hard so i apologize come to the course if you want to make sure you don't hacked again you go you don't get hacked again and if you want to learn how i use my google tools to run my business um, google drive I'll, I'll talk about how i how I organize it. I'll talk about how I use Google spreadsheets to track my clients, uh, track my client activity in terms of like how many sessions left and, and how much they've paid and, and all that stuff. I use the Google spreadsheet to track that. I use Google spreadsheet to track my content. Um, I organize things by Google documents. I link everything together. I use Google Chrome to run my whole business. Um, so I can easily access any of my documents from here. Okay, I can easily access any of my, you know, for example, I go here and there, and there are my workshop tasks. Here's what I need to do for the next workshop starting August 14th, right? I got to do this, send a last chance email, you know, update this, update this. This is all organized. My entire and business is run this way. Book launch tasks, my course framework, what I need to do for my new course research. Um, okay, and then like if I wanted to uh, look at my client group. Okay, my client, I have two client groups. So I just open this, I click open all, and here are my, here are my, my, my client groups, just, just like this, it just opens like that, okay? So it's just everything I run on, on, on Google Chrome and, on, and this is my client spreadsheet, okay? This is my content spreadsheet. Um, I even have my timers here, it's all here. So anyway, I, I don't wanna make this free video like I said, free videos need to be easy to consume, not a course. Okay, tip, tip, tip. I've, already, I've said this before. What's the difference between a free video and a paid video? When you're, doing, when you're watching a free video, you're here to enjoy yourself. You're here to learn a little bit something for free, um, but you're not ready to sit down with a pen and paper and do the work. Most of you aren't. A few of you super fans might be, oh, George, give everything away for free. But most, trust me, most people are not ready no, including most people watching this, they're not ready to sit down and do the work. They're just like, oh, I'm just enjoying something for free. So that's, I've said this before, that's the difference between free and a paid video, okay? Free is easy to consume. P 
people aren't ready to be students yet. Don't give too much, not because you're, you're not, you're stingy, don't wanna give everything away, because you are giving in the wrong context. Whereas the paid video, all right, I'm gonna pay for this, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna get ready to study and, and really learn something that I'm gonna use uh, in my business or whatever. So, or my life, health, relationships, spirituality, whatever it is you work with people on. So anyway, that's, um, uh, I wanna uh, say a couple other things about the background of, of this course is that the way, and then you might use this as a, as a, as a very simple tip too. Um, the way I organize my thoughts and my content is basically uh, in a hierarchy. And the hierarchy goes like this. My framework is at the top. I recently taught a whole course about how to create a framework. So if you're interested in that, but my framework is basically how I think about my work. Okay. How I think about my work, the various aspects of my work. That's my framework is sort of like the outline, the, the overarching umbrella philosophy. That's, that's the framework. And underneath the framework are my books and courses. Okay. My books and courses are basically the big parts of my work. Of course, I talk about marketing. I talk about productivity. I talk about um, you know authentic selling things like that. So those are my those are my big big parts of my 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 framework. Okay, so underneath the framework philosophy is the big parts of my work, and those are put into courses and books. So that's how I organize things. And then underneath the books and courses are my my content, like this video, for example, or other pieces of content my blogs, my videos, they all fit into either my books or my courses. My courses have additional, a lot more content that's more in depth and harder to teach in a free thing like this. But so I think of a framework, books and courses, free content. And then at the bottom there is research. If I'm going to be doing research in a, so I'm doing internet research, I'm browsing the internet, you know, learning, learning new things. If I'm doing it in a productive way, it needs to be with content and courses in mind. Otherwise, that's why there's a hierarchy, framework, books and courses, content, and then research. So the research needs to support either the content or the courses. Otherwise, I'm just, maybe it's hobby research and that's okay. I'm having fun, looking something up, enjoying a topic that I'm passionate about. But if I'm gonna be productive in my research, I'm gonna know that I'm not gonna research for the next eight hours or the next eight weeks, I'm just gonna research enough for my next piece of content. I'm gonna research just enough for my next course session. That's how I'm able to be so efficient. I, I limit my, my research time by just the next piece of content that I'm doing, right? So for example, before this video, I quickly researched the thing about the URL, you know, hacking thing. I, I knew that forever, but I wanted to look at some articles, see how they describe it. So um, anyway, I, I hope this has been, at least mildly interesting, uh, especially for those of you who might want to take my my course on um, on how I use my Google tools to manage my business. And I'm just kind of looking at um, the, the video, the Facebook Live to see if there are any comments. If you do have any comments and questions um, below the video. Um, oh, by the way, I also want to give you a second tip about um, about online security. Besides that Yahoo thing that I told you about, the other tip uh, that is so simple that a lot of people don't do is passwords, okay? Please don't use a password like 12345 or ABCD or your, you know, your, 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 your child's name or, or something like that because that's easy to guess. Just the password should basically be like this. Choose a password that is a, is, a, is a word that's really unique to you. Like maybe it, it's, not, it's not part of your name, okay? It's not your middle name. It's not your child's name. It's not no one from your family members. But choose a word that's like, no one's going to guess this. Like let's say tree, okay? Even if it's a regular word, it's okay. Tree, that's like no one's going to get, because that's not related to your name. And, you know, tree, it's fine, you know? Um, don't do like your, your pet's name or whatever, but do a, do a word that no one's going to guess, a random word, but that you'll remember. It's meaningful to you, okay? It's a random word that you'll remember. And, and then a, um, a, a number that's meaningful to you, except for your birth date. Don't use your birth date. No word, no, but some other number that's meaningful to you. I don't know. 
um, you'll have to figure it out. But it's just like a two to four digit number that's meaningful to you and a meaningful word that's meaningful, a word that's meaningful to you. And as long as you have a, a word that is like, let's say you're going to use a four digit number, not one, two, three, four, and not your birth year and not your month and date, but some other number that's meaningful to you. Okay, figure, figure it out, memorize it. That's the meaningful number. Four digit uh, number and with a, with a word that's at least six letters. So that therefore you have 10. You have 10, um, uh, actually, um, yeah, you have 10 characters. Sometimes passwords also require you to have a symbol like an exclamation mark. That's fine. That's, you know, that's just put that at the end if that requires it. But so, so basically that's it. And, and if, you, if you use that password everywhere, you won't forget it, okay? No one's gonna be able to guess it. And if you log into websites, knowing the whole dot com slash thing and what's the word before that, and the word before that must be preceded by either the HTTP colon slash slash or the dot. So safety dot something, secure dot something, you know, whatever else, database dot something is fine. But the set something dot com slash need to be Facebook or Bank of America or, or PayPal or whatever. And um, I'll, in, in my blog post to this video, I'll also put a few more links to teach you how to study URLs. But it's like, once you learn how to study URLs and once you have a password that's not, you know, your one, two, three, four or, or password or, or whatever, which is the majority of how people get hacked, then you will never get hacked. Like, like me, I've never gotten hacked. So I, I, people are so, like, if you don't study URLs, you don't know, how, you, you log into a website that looks like PayPal that looks like Bank of America, that looks like Facebook. And that's how you, people grab your passwords because they set up a website that looks just like Facebook, except the URL says, you know, safetyfacebook.com. It's not safetyfacebook.com. It's like, you know, it's gotta be safety.facebook.com. Then it's okay. But it's, you know, so um, anyway, I, this, this video has been hard for me to make because I have to resist trying to teach you things and I haven't really prepared the course yet. So my teaching is kind of all over the place right now. But if you're interested in this stuff, if you're interested in learning how I use my tools, take the course. Um, I look forward to seeing you there. And thank you for the, the, the tips, or thank you for the comments here, uh, Mary and Prem and Captain. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing, seeing some of you in the course. And thanks also for joining me, uh, Becky and Susan as well. And with that, if you have any questions that um, you'd like for me to answer in the course or any questions that are super quick to answer, I might be able to do it right in the comments below. So feel free to ask. All right, I wish you well and I will see you in the next video.